Welcome to the McMaster University Demystifying Medicine Seminar Series. This video is intended for intensive care unit patients and will cover prevention strategies of the physical and psychological effects of being in the intensive care unit, or ICU. The ICU is a unit in the hospital where seriously ill patients are cared for under close observation by specially trained staff. During this time, the patient may be held in restraints with tubes and wires attached to them. Following several weeks or months in this condition, patients may have little memory of their time in the hospital. Patients who survive critical illness and intensive care commonly experience a range of symptoms, collectively known as post-intensive care syndrome, or PICS. These symptoms fall under three categories, mental health problems, physical dysfunction, and cognitive dysfunction. The physical dysfunction associated with PICS is called intensive care acquired weakness and is characterized by weakness that occurs due to prolonged bed rest. According to a study conducted by Norden and al. in 2012, limited activity levels and excessive physical assistance for even the most basic tasks can cause ICU weakness in as little as four to seven days. The term ICU-acquired weakness describes critical illness myopathy CIM, and critical illness polyneuropathy CIP, or a combination of both. Critical illness myopathy, or CIM, results in extraordinary muscle weakness. A study done by Lachemus in 1998 showed that 42% of ICU patients over a four-year period developed critical illness myopathy. Critical illness polyneuropathy, or CIP, describes impairments in the neuromuscular system, including impaired reflexes, reduced sensation of pain, and other sensory damage. Physical rehabilitation intervention can be implemented to combat ICU-acquired weakness with very few side effects. One of these techniques, called cycle, is being researched by Dr. Michelle Coe and her colleagues at the St. Joseph's Healthcare Center in Hamilton. The cycle program is designed to improve lower extremity strength for patients. Within a few days in the ICU, the muscle diameter decreases by 5%, and within a week alone, the muscle diameter decreases by 15%. Cycle offers in-bed cycling along with a breathing machine and has been proven to help decrease the weakness and muscle wasting that can occur from prolonged sitting or bed rest. Some patients have even shown muscle fiber growth with early intervention of this program. The psychological effects associated with PICS stem from the patient trying to cope with their critical illness and any fears associated with it. This may create an effect known as trauma. Patients may also experience delirium. Symptoms of delirium include confusion, hallucinations, and disorientation. The main goal of the ICU is to keep the patient alive but it can also contribute to the fear and anxiety they will experience. Being connected to all sorts of tubes and catheters can be unsettling and violating. Patient sleep patterns may also get disrupted due to noisy machines and bright lights, along with staff constantly waking them to check their conditions. The aftermath of all this stress can be physically and emotionally taxing and can have significant effects on the body. When you're stressed, your brain fires off a chain of signals that triggers a stress response. This stress response allows the body to release stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. This turns on the body's fight or flight response, which is a built-in alarm system that alerts your body about any immediate danger. Normally, once the stressor goes away, this response turns off and your body returns to normal. But in constantly high stress settings, like the ICU, the body will be kept in alert mode and will release more stress hormones. Too much stress hormone release can have negative effects on the body and brain. This interferes with how the brain handles stress, which can have major effects on mental health. As a result, after leaving the ICU, patients may develop disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. Recent research, including a paper published in 2014 by Long, Cross, Davy Dow and Curtis focuses on preventative strategies that can be used for survivors of critical illness. Some suggested strategies include avoiding overuse of sedation, particularly one type called benzodiazepines, keeping ICU diaries outlining personal experiences, 
introducing coping and mindfulness techniques after discharge, and psychological intervention while in the ICU. In 2011, Paris and al. published a study examining the effectiveness of psychological intervention. This includes educational interventions about symptoms patients may be experiencing, counseling, and stress management. They found that intervention resulted in lower anxiety, depression, and PTSD symptoms, as well as decreased dependency on psychiatric medications. If you're experiencing these issues, you are not alone. Caregivers, family members, and up to 40% of ICU survivors also suffer from these problems. If you feel like you've been affected by your ICU experience, please talk to your doctor or mental health professional. For more information and helpful resources, visit the Society of Critical Care Medicine at the Patients and Families tab. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and remember to be kind to yourself.